A presentation by Equality North Carolina, a statewide group dedicated to securing equal rights and justice for lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender people. When you have no money to live off of because you're fired, because you're gay, it, it's really hard. It's discrimination. You can never take it back. You wanted to get rid of me for who I am. They're supposed to judge you on your character, your background, and your resume, and education. I feel like that's all pushed aside for me. You know, I've gone through college, and I know six different languages, and there are so many things that I can do and I can apply for, but I just feel like I'm not taken seriously. And I feel like they judge me based on the appearance that I'm a transsexual and they know it versus that I'm just a normal person looking for a job to work like someone else and pay my bills. How would you feel if, you know, you were fired and there's not, like, nothing you can do about it just because they don't have to give you a reason? And if you can't prove your case and something else, then you're just jobless. You're jobless. Horrible. Horrible, the feeling of what it felt like that I wasn't good enough to work for them. I worked at a factory for two years, and every year they would have a Christmas party, and it would be for all the employees to come. My superiors told me that I wasn't supposed to go to this party and that if I showed up, that I wouldn't be able to keep my job. Then there was another incident where I worked as a cashier in a store. And my manager at the time knew I was transgender, but the regional manager did not know that I was transgender. And he came in and he told me that I was not to be wearing makeup and that I was to go home and I was to take off my bra. Granted, I couldn't go home and take off my bra because it had been kind of hard to hide my chest. So, I mean, I, I willingly quit. When I got to this job here, Clean the elevator. I would clean the elevator and spray it down and mop it out every day, making sure there weren't no pieces of paper. This right here would definitely not be here. I didn't choose to leave. I just chose to do my job and perform the best I could. But when I got terminated, I said, enough is enough. This is the third time. I knew it was the discrimination that caused this whole issue. The specific comment that was made to me was you shouldn't be seen around the front desk anymore and that you're not allowed to give tours to any other residents that are going to be leasing here anymore because you're transgender and that's the first thing that people will see and they don't need to see that. People look at transgender people as different but it doesn't matter what they look at us as. We are still people. We work just as hard. So why should we be looked at as any different than a normal person? If we can just stop the hate, stop the judgment, don't look at that person as a male. Don't look at that woman as a female. Just look at them as an equal, as a person. We met a few years ago through a mutual friend. Yep. Just hanging out. We tried to be friends. <laughs> it didn't last very long. <laughs> it didn't. <laughs> Shana kind of got a ready-made family of sorts because uh, Mary already lived with me. Through a program in North Carolina, it's called the AFL, Alternative Family Living. The whole thought is that she lived with a family in a true family style and it's an alternative to either group homes or an institution. Shana always describes it as she was dating the both of us. A girlfriend with a child but Mary is 62 <laughs> so it was a little different. We had a commitment ceremony this past September. It wasn't something we took lightly. We no. Thought a lot of, about it, obviously, celebrating the fact that we were making a commitment, a life commitment to each to other. Each other. Yeah. And it, it, that actually has, it has changed um, how we look at each other, how we look at the future. 
We talked about going to other states, the actual legalization part of it, how much that meant to us versus being able to say it in front of our family and friends. Mm -hmm. And we ultimately chose to be in front of our community more so than we did the law, but it would have been perfect. It would have been a perfect day if we had been able to do both. Yeah. I wouldn't have wanted to raise <laughs> raise that one with anybody but you. It does kind of hurt that I don't really get to be included. And his picture just melted our hearts. We couldn't help it. We were like, that is the one. There was just no yeah. other place in our heart but for him. Here we are meeting our son, and I remember Shayna had the camera, and this nurse just plopped him in our lap. Didn't say anything. Like, here he is. Social worker didn't even introduce herself. We're sitting there, and there's just chaos. There's all these kids. Um, you and know, I, I do a little, these, one of these, a little reach yeah, around. So she's like, Chick. And Jax's head is, like, in the corner, and we're just like, <laughs> like, our first family photo. Like, this is awesome, so isn't awkward. it? <laughs> we knew it was worth it as, the, as it was unfolding. Seeing this kid come out, all of the developmental assessments, you know, said... He would never, you know, take a spoon. He wouldn't even open his mouth, you know. Eventually started eating, you know, with the spoon. And it was like, he's meant to be here. And, you know, we are his parents. You don't sleep. You don't eat. You're lucky you check your teeth in the mirror. Like, oh, I brushed my teeth. Great. And I'm dressed. You just think so differently as a parent. You're no longer first. Yeah. I put my family above anything else now. I'm considered the second uh, other adult, other living, adult in the, living in the home. Um, as is Mary. Um, I have just as much parental responsibility, but on paper, they couldn't you know, deem us as both parents. The state would not recognize it. That ad adoption decree will say Megan Parker. His birth certificate will say Megan Parker. It's, it's not fair. And when she is just as much of a parent and does everything right beside me. He had a surgery back in June and... I wasn't allowed to stay overnight with him in the hospital. I had to leave yeah. with visitor hours were over. When it came to who was going to stay, it was it always... Had to be me. And any time a doctor had any updates, questions about anything that had happened previously, they went to Megan. I would have never taken on the responsibility of parenting a special needs child by myself. On paper, that's what it is. And uh, it's, it's really a shame, you know, because it's not a decision I made by myself. I'm here for all the memories. I'm here for the stuff that matters. People will, will change their minds and things will work out that we can both have equal rights to our son. And then when you were in the hospital, when my mom came, oh, your mom, the doctors would just talk, talk, talk. And even my mom was sort of like, you know, you're talking to the wrong person, you know. I wasn't ever worried they would make me leave. I was just worried that they wouldn't count me in, that they wouldn't fill me in, that they wouldn't, you know, ask me, you know, what to do if it came to a point where a decision had to be made that they would just do what was in their best interest instead of including the wishes of their family member. I did have a lot of complications. And any time I would share some information, well, the nurses just discounted me. Well, I was just having to answer a lot of questions where she could easily have answered them. I was so like, drugged. drugged. <laughs> and the financial advisor sat right there and just kept directing every question towards me. Shana was in the room. She did speak over me a couple times. It was kind of like that. I would look at her like, help. I don't know. If she were my husband, we wouldn't have had those issues. Yeah. We wouldn't have had to ask for those liberties. They would have automatically assumed to include that other person in those decisions or that information. But I had to constantly ask to be included. And a doctor would be walking away as they left her room. I would have to kind of chase them down and be like, can you please tell me? What's going on? Yeah. 
How I wonder what We're a family, just like any other family. We're not asking for anything different. We're asking for the same. In the sky, twinkle, twinkle, little star. How I wonder what you are.